Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Welcome grade 11 to biology online class. Today, our lesson title is Energy Pyramid. It's chapter 13, uh, section 13.6, or simply Pyramid uh, Models. Pyramid Models is the title of our lesson. Now, our lesson objective for today is to identify lesson objective number one to identify the three types of pyramids number two to describe the energy pyramid number three to describe biomass pyramid also we will describe pyramid of numbers the new words that you will learn in this lesson are energy pyramid biomass pyramid Pyramid of Numbers. Now, let's begin with Energy Pyramid. Uh, first of all, already uh, our first lesson objective was to identify the three types of pyramid models. So, the three types of pyramid models are Energy Pyramid, Biomass Pyramid, and Pyramid of Numbers. We start with the pyramids. Pyramids model the distribution of energy and matter in an ecosystem. So what does it shows? Pyramids shows us the amount of available energy at each trophic level or the amount of matter required to support a trophic level and a food chain or in a food web. Now we will start with energy pyramid. An energy pyramid shows the distribution of energy among trophic levels. First of all, if you remember, when I was explaining the food chains and food webs, I have told you at that time that almost for all ecosystems, the main source of energy is sun. So sun provides energy in the form of sunlight to almost all ecosystems. Now, this energy from the sun is captured by plants. The plants convert light energy into chemical energy in a process known as photosynthesis. Now, uh, you know that when energy is converted in to, uh, from one form and to another form, some of the energy is lost and some of the energy is converted into another form. But the total amount of energy always remains constant or same. Now, let's suppose the producers, when they capture light energy and convert it into chemical energy, after that, primary consumers, when they eat producers or the plants, they get some of the energy from it and some of the energy is lost. Some of the energy is lost into the environment in the form of heat or waste. Now, about loss of energy. Look, when you eat food, your food mainly contains proteins, carbohydrates or fats. So, when you eat food, you get energy from this. But then uh, some of the energy, uh, we need energy. We need energy for growth. We need energy for movement. We need energy for reproduction and so many uh, other processes like cellular respiration. And some of the energy is used for maintaining homeostasis. Uh, for maintaining constant internal body conditions or temperature. So the energy is consumed for different processes. So whenever energy moves from one trophic level and to another trophic level, some energy is lost or most of the energy is lost in the form of heat or in the form of waste into the environment and only some of the energy is incorporated into the 
consumer's body or into the next trophic level. Like, let's suppose I want to show you here an energy pyramid model. If you look at this diagram, we have four trophic levels. At the bottom or at the base, we have producers. Now the producers capture energy from sunlight, convert it into chemical energy. Then primary consumers makes the second trophic level. Now primary consumers, we also call them herbivores, yani the animals that depends on plants for their food, that eats plants simply, like a sheep or a goat or a rabbit or a camel. All these are herbivores, primary consumers. Now when primary consumers eat producers, incorporates them into their own body, so 90% of the energy contained by producers is lost in the form of heat or waste into the environment. Only 10% of the energy gets transferred into the bodies of primary consumers. Then, secondary consumers like a fox or a snake or any other secondary consumer, when it eats a primary consumer like a grasshopper or a rabbit or any other primary consumer, again 90% of the energy is lost into the environment and 10% of the energy is moved or, or is transferred into the bodies of secondary consumers. Then the last trophic level, the fourth trophic level shown over here, it is called tertiary consumers or top carnivore. The top carnivore, when they eat, the secondary consumers, again, 90% of the energy is lost and only 10% of the energy is transferred into the bodies of top carnivore or tertiary consumers. So, let me show you one more diagram. Now, over here, again, we have four trophic levels. Now, let's suppose at the bottom, producers contains now the uh, unit to measure energy uh, and an ecosystem is kilocalories. Now, let's suppose the producers contain 10,000 kilocalories of energies of energy. Primary consumers, when they eat or when they consume producers, they will get only 10%. So, if we make 10% 10 of 10,000 kilocalories, so primary consumers will have only 1,000 kilocalories of energy. Then secondary consumers, when they eat primary consumers, again 90% of the energy will be lost. So only 100 kilocalories of energy they will have or it will be transferred into their body. And then when top carnivore or tertiary consumers, when they consume or when they eat secondary consumers, again only 10% energy will get transferred. So the amount of available energy, it will be only 10 kilocalories for the top carnivore or for the tertiary consumer. So that's why if you look at this pyramid model, if we move up from down, it becomes smaller. So th that shows that the amount of available energy decreases or becomes less as we move up from one trophic level and to another in a food chain. So simply uh, energy pyramid shows the distribution of energy in an ecosystem or in a food chain or the amount of available energy at each trophic level is shown through energy pyramids. Makes sense? I guess it's quite easy. There is a critical thinking question for you. Uh, if each level in a food chain typically loses 90% of the energy it takes in and the producer level uses 1000 kilocalories of energy, how much of that energy is left after the third trophic level? Uh, I want you to think for a couple of minutes and I want you to answer this question. I hope that uh, you will be able to answer this question after all this explanation. Now the second type of uh, pyramid model is biomass, uh, biomass pyramid. 
Now, biomass, first of all, let's define bi biomass. What is biomass? Biomass is a measure of the total dry mass of organisms in a given area. Biomass is a measure of the total dry mass of organisms in a given area. Now, biomass pyramid shows us what? It shows us amount of dry mass available at each trophic level. Like, let's suppose, again, in this biomass pyramid, we have four trophic levels. At the bottom, we have producers, then we have primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Now, if you look at this diagram, the amount of producers available at the bottom is 2,000 grams per meter square. And then and at primary consumers, uh, the amount of dry mass available for the primary consumers is 675 grams per meter square and like this. So simply, biomass pyramid shows the total dry mass of organisms in a given area or how much dry mass is needed uh, at the bottom, let's suppose to support primary consumers. And then how much dry mass is needed? Okay, the amount of dry mass needed to support secondary consumers and the amount of dry mass of organisms needed to support tertiary consumers. All this is shown by biomass, biomass pyramids. The third type of pyramid is pyramids of numbers. Now, pyramids of numbers shows the number of available living organisms or the number of organisms or individuals or living organisms at each trophic level. Again, if you look at this uh, pyramid of numbers, we have four trophic levels. Okay, the amount of producers or the amount of grasses or plants at the bottom is uh, uh, written over here, it's given over here, it is, and then we move to the primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumer. You can look at the figures, okay, at uh, primary consumers, the number of individuals, I guess it's 500,000, and if you look at the secondary consumer, so the number of secondary consumers over here, like we have snake, and we have a bird, uh, and a fox, it's 5,000, the total number, and the tertiary consumers, we have only five. So, pyramid of numbers simply show us uh, the number of individual organisms in a given area or in a given ecosystem or in a food chain, but better we say in a given ecosystem or an, an ecosystem. So these are the three different types of pyramid models. We started with energy pyramid, then biomass pyramid, and the third one, pyramid of numbers. Summarizing it up, uh, energy pyramid simply shows us amount of available energy at each trophic level in, a, uh, in an ecosystem. And biomass pyramid shows us amount of dry mass at each trophic level. And pyramid of number shows us number of individual living organisms in a specific ecosystem. I hope it's clear and I hope that you enjoy the lesson. Thank you and stay safe until we meet again. Thanks a lot. Grade 11.